<laughs> I apologize about that. Uh, my computer just decided it was the right time to uh, have an issue. Uh, thank you, council members. Uh, appreciate the ability to come speak to you tonight uh, uh, regarding redistricting. Uh, and I know there are probably a lot of, of guests who would like to speak to this, so I'll just go through uh, briefly the presentation we, we uh, discussed, I believe it was three weeks ago. Uh, so redistricting is a process of every 10 years ensuring that voting wards and districts, or wards as we call them here, are proportional, meaning they're uh, roughly equal representation between all members of the, the citizenry and or residents, and, and uh, that all of the council members are roughly representing equal portions of the population. Uh, it's based off the decennial census, and so, of course, we know that the census took place in 2020. Uh, of course, it, it was uh, delayed somewhat due to uh, COVID and a number of other factors. And uh, it was released later than, than typically uh, it is. Uh, when we look at redistricting, we're bound by uh, both uh, the Code of Alabama and specific laws relating to municipalities, to the Voting Rights Act, which is federal regulation, and then previous uh, prior cases. Uh, so looking at the 2020 census, what you have here is the 2010 and 2020 uh, differences. And so you'll see we grew from 26,477 people to 30,995 people. As I've mentioned to you before, uh, we feel like this number represents an undercount of the population. We'll be working to put together a uh, challenge to our census numbers, but generally those are, are very, uh, a very low success rate, and we would, we would likely only add a, a small portion if we are successful. Uh, as you see, the, uh, the, the population of both uh, white and African American uh, increased in number, but in both cases as a portion of the, the population, both decreased uh, slightly. So white goes from 50.6 to 48.8, and African American goes from 43.5 to 38.8. We did see growth in uh, both the Asian population, uh, those representing, uh, classify or, uh, classifying themselves as an other race or uh, two or more races or uh, the Hispanic ethnicity. Uh, the criteria for redistricting, uh, and this is generally set out by uh, the state and, and the federal government, are that each district shall contain nearly equal population, uh, plus or minus 5%. Uh, and for the city of Opelika, uh, that comes out to uh, between 580, 5,889 and 6509 uh, people in each ward. Each district should be a single unbroken border, geographic continuity. Each district should be relatively compact to the extent possible. Uh, population should not be bypassed in favor of more distant populations. Each district should be uh, follow easy identifiable natural man-made boundaries, uh, streets, railroads, uh, creeks, waterways, and they should be understandable by residents. Neighborhoods where possible and communities of interest should be kept intact in the same district, so we don't want to uh, have one person on one side of the street, if possible, voting in one ward while the other may be in a different. And then efforts should be made to, to avoid pairing uh, incumbents, so we don't want to, to place you council members running against each other uh, at the next election. And then no district should be drawn for the purpose of diluting the voting strength of any language, ethnic, ethnic or racial minority group. Uh, And here you see kind of the population of Ward 1 uh, through 5, and then fr from 2010 to 2020. And so you'll see that uh, there was a small growth in Ward 1. Uh, wards 2, 4, and 5 saw the, the bulk of the growth uh, through the, the past 10 years. And then there was a slight decrease in Ward 3 of 247 people. So you do see the um, Ward 1 and Ward 3s are, are the ones that are interior to the city and, and somewhat uh, landlocked. And so we get to how we came up, or what we, the map that we came up with. And so largely we started with the, the map from 2010 and then started working to make sure that we meet the criteria 
proposed in the uh, redistricting guideline and criteria. This generally shows the, uh, the, dis the wards or districts as we've proposed to you. Uh, and generally you'll see that they stay in their same uh, geographic boundaries. Now there were some changes and uh, I won't go through all of them, but uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, if, at a later time when it's, when it's appropriate after public comment. Uh, and then here you see the uh, proposed district's voting age population demographic breakdown. breakdown. And so uh, we, after looking through this, we, we went with voting age population uh, because those are the people that can actually vote in election. And, and you'll see the, the breakdown of each ward. So you see Ward 1 is 6,074. You'll see that population uh, that is 18 or older and then it breaks down by race uh, or ethnicity, uh, the number and percentage in each uh, bracket. And so uh, wards one and ward two would remain under this proposed plan, uh, majority minority uh, represented wards. And then uh, this shows you the Total population against the, the mean population, so 6,199 would be the uh, kind of the, the mean number we're trying to target. And so this shows you that we've tried to, to get as, as close as possible within that range. So uh, I think the uh, Ward 1 is, is about 125 people under that mean. Ward uh, 4 is about 132 over that. But otherwise, they are all fairly close. And then here you see existing Ward 1 and proposed, and so you'll see it, it, it compacts uh, to some degree. Uh, we also, as, as part of this, we, we tried to follow where we could both the uh, House, the State House districts and the uh, County Commission districts where we could. And then Ward 2 as existing, and then Ward 2 is proposed. Ward 3 is existing and then proposed. So it, it extended to the north some, and again, this was the one where we had to add the most population. Ward 4, which is on the western boundary, and then uh, how it uh, was modified. And then Ward 5 on the eastern boundary, and it changes there. Again, uh, that is uh, what we had for you for the presentation. I'll, I, again, I, I know tonight's uh, more about collecting public input, but I'll be happy to answer any questions both by the, the council or, or the uh, citizenry at the appropriate time. Okay. All right. Well, we'll open it for public comment. If you would like to come to the podium and um, make a comment, we will make a note of them, and as we go through these in the future, we'll try to make sure that we address whatever the question may be. and also it will provide
lives for open dialogue. Number four, we believe that public hearings in each ward will provide for total inclusion of all citizens. Number five, the redistricting and reapportionment process is complex. And it only happens every 10 years. Service citizens of Open Life have come to us and requested that our branch assist them in understanding this process. And we plan to do just that. Thank you very much. Test. There you go. There. Good evening. I am Patricia A. Patsy Jones, speaking as an individual, but coming because of having been on the city council. And let me just thank you for allowing us this opportunity to speak. I have gone online and looked at the map and I'm trying to understand more for clarity purposes at, in Ward 1 and I have also had some time with Matt as far as speaking. 
When we did this 10 years ago, of course, as already been stated, Ward 1 is one that is very compact, it's landlocked, and so we have to pull numbers from different places. And pulling those numbers last 10 years, we tried to pull them that it would be diverse in a way where the next 10 years that if we have to pick up numbers that we could pick them up from the other side of the street. I want to make sure I'm looking at the map the way I'm seeing it because it appears to me that what we did 10 years ago and including those things that we had to, uh, areas we had to add were taken out. Am I correct on that, Matt? Because I want to make sure I'm clear. It appears to me that the areas that we added are taken out this time and redone in a different way. And I'm trying to understand the rationale for that. Because uh, one of the reasons for doing the way we had, and I know, of course, census numbers and everything makes a difference. I understand that. But to me, in looking at the map, I would have gone across the street to bring in all of the road that would have been c contiguous with what we had already done. Now, you may have done something differently for a different reason. I'm sure you have. But I would like for you to look at that, go back, because uh, we took a lot of time in doing that, and we pulled, <coughs> I know, a great deal from your district, uh, President Smith. And so uh, I would like to see us keep what was in the district before and cross over the street to bring all of that different group to stay together, in other words, not one side of the road in one district and the other side in another district. And I think you could pull the numbers where that would comply with what we are looking and keeping the numbers in the district as a majority minority, as well as making sure you have uh, one vote, one person. And that's, that's why I'm here today, just asking you to go back and see if that fix could. And one of the reasons, again, for that, because it's very compact, and the way we had extended those areas, it allows it to have uh, room to grow. And please take that under consideration. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is John Andrew Harris. I live at 311 East Avenue. I'm a political action chairman for the state wing of ACP. I am a concern too. I had the distinguished pleasure of serving on this body for eight years and just like what Councilwoman Jones said, and I understand the process of redistricting. And when I was on there, and I was amazed, I don't know how process started, we had the city council work together. We dialogue, we shared ideas, we understand each other, but we felt like the best thing that the Jones said, we did the same thing by trying to pull people together, by drawing these lines and making everybody diverse. What I see in now, and I don't know, I just looked at the growth of the map and looked at the map that I feel like since the other population and the overlap has grown, we need to make this district represent the, what we are looking at on that map. And I'm a firm believer of that. And I don't see some of those districts like that. Because if we're gonna move forward together, like the president stated, I 100% support that. But we need to have a public meeting in each one of the districts. We need to hear from the constituents. Because I had a lot of my people that I've been around talking to, they are confused. They don't understand, and they want to know too, because see that now I have new people saying they're taking people off the voting list. They're doing this. I don't know what kind of inform we're going to inform the citizen about this, because you know we're dealing with the legislature. I heard that statement, 
because we got involved with some of the mess that was going on now. So we as representatives of overlap, we want to be fair. We want to present ourselves in a fair manner to do what's right. And I want to be here to help you in a way I can, assist you. I want to dialogue with you. And I want to work with you in a positive way to move this city forward in a positive way. Thank you so much. Are there others that would like to speak at the public hearing uh, specifically addressing the redistricting? Okay. Good evening. My name is Christine Berry Bradshaw. I am part of the NAACP. And I concur with our President Allen in regards to the redistricting as well as to make it clear so we can understand. So I support the NAACP as well. So we pray that we can work together cohesively and let's do it together. Let's make a difference. Thank you. The others? Okay, um, Matt and, and <clears throat> Russell, if, if you uh, would work with each other and let's see about um, arranging a meeting in each ward and where, where we should do them at and, what, uh, and on what kind of schedule. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see a problem with doing that. I think it's a wise thing and we'll, we'll go into each ward and uh, We'll have to be careful about how many council persons attend, but uh, uh, but we would uh, if we could work those out. As long as we're not deliberating any, making any decisions, I guess that doesn't matter, right? But information on me, that's no no problem. Every council member can, can attend. Yeah, yeah. So as long as you don't deliberate uh, and make decisions on the map. We just have to pick the, the dates and, and the proper places and then how to publicize it. And it's all going to be noticed, so the media and the citizens will have notice of the meetings. Anyone can attend that okay. desires to. All right. I don't yeah, see and, and we can discuss that with you, President Smith. We can have ward meetings here or we can have ward meetings in the wards. We, the only thing about having the ward meetings in the wards is we would have to determine places in each ward to have them. Um, yeah, but we can coordinate that if that's what you choose. Yeah, and that's a little bit of a concern, but I think that, uh, I mean, just thinking out loud, I mean, we could obviously do, what is this, Ward 2 here? We could do it at each voting location, would be off the top of my head. That's would a possibility. Be the voting location in each ward and That'd set up a meeting at each voting location. Covington and... So it would be Covington and then the Learning Center, and then Denson, um, East Alabama Learning Center is Ward 4, and then Sports Club. And sport club. So that would be, that's an option if yeah. you would like to do and that. that. And that makes a lot of sense. So y'all see if y'all could work on that, and let's coordinate that. Sure. And then figure out how we're going to publicize it. All right. Uh, if there's no, about, no one else that would like to speak, then we're going to end the public hearing and we're going to move into our work session. Uh, we, we need to wait till 6.45. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's why <laughs> I was wondering why nobody else wanted to speak. <laughs> do we all can you sing Kumba? Do we have to adjourn this? Meeting? We do need to adjourn. Yes, sir. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All right, so we'll wait a few minutes and we'll start uh, the uh, work session meeting. We have several things where we're going to want to discuss there. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to get with you yeah. on.
instead of what was drawn out into Cunningham and Hamilton, this is the what's that? The, the, the across gate, not gateway, yeah, gateway gateway drive out there. The idea is Wharton did have some on across gateway, but instead he just kept everything on this side of gateway, which means he took away the Cunningham area, the Hamilton area, which is that area behind. You know where that auto uh, house or whatever that is. Yeah. You know the area behind it. That was in Wharton, yeah. but he took that away and gave and put more like Staley and Bruce, which Bruce is home. still on next, close to Pleasant. Which yeah. I, Uh, probably trying to keep the demographics about that's the that's same that's as what he was trying to do. You, know? I think he did a good job. you know, if you look at it, the demographics are almost
If I may have your attention, please. If I may have your attention. If I can have your attention, I'd like to call the Opelika City Council work session to order. We have several things that we need to um, address before we move into our regular meeting. I think that uh, Matt Mosley is the star of all this. Uh, Jerry, we're going to get to you in a second. Sit back down. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Council President. Uh, as you said, we have five items tonight for you that we wanted to bring to you for a request to advertise. Uh, the first is a request at 2500 block of Frederick Road. This is on the north side of Frederick Road, uh, uh, just a, kind of across the street from uh, Kroger and past Aldi uh, going to the west. Uh, the subject property is R4M, and the applicant is uh, Shea and Terry Knight requesting uh, to rezone this to C2 with the gateway corridor primary overlay. Uh, again, it's approximately seven acres. They did, I will note that at Planning Commission, they did also show the, a request to put an office building uh, on this as well, and two office warehouse buildings on there. So. Questions? Comments? Pleasure to council to send that to advertising. Thank you. All right. Thank you. The second item is a also a rezoning request. This is six acres, uh, also on Frederick Road. This is at the intersection of Frederick Road and Old Oak Liker Road. Uh, the request is from John Anglin and Terry Johnson. They are requesting to rezone the six acres from R4 to C2 with a gateway corridor or primary overlay. Uh, this again got a positive recommendation from the Planning Commission and uh, this is uh, largely on Old Opelika Road but does contain just a small bit of frontage on Frederick Road. That's that property that has that red and white for sale sign on it? I believe so, yes sir. They've been trying to do something with that for a long time. It, it touches a larger, or not a larger, approximately the same size piece of property that goes all the way to Cunningham. Uh, as well, so. It has a big fall off in the back of it, doesn't it? I think there may be a little bit of drop, but I'm, I'm not quite sure which property that, that falls on. Okay. Questions? Pleasure to council to send that to advertising. Okay, thank right. you. Item number three is also a rezoning request. This is uh, located on First Avenue. Uh, most people know this is part of the former uh, Pepperell Mills property. The applicant is Thomas Johnson for, with Holland Homes for Saucer Investments, LLC. And this is a request to rezone approximately uh, 35 acres uh, from C2 and uh, Village Residential 1 uh, to a planned unit development. Uh, the uh, master plan for this shows a mix of residential and commercial uses, so as you start from the north, uh, adjacent to the uh, existing mill uh, neighborhood properties. You start with single family, you move down to First Avenue where you, you have a, a lot of liner uh, townhome uh, mixed or townhome units. And then as you get across the street onto uh, the actual mill property itself, uh, you have uh, both some office, some entertainment and uh, retail, and then residential uses proposed, uh, multifamily residential uses proposed there. Total uh, was about 298. The applicant, based on a uh, requirement of planning commission for their approval, is reducing that down. So I, I don't have the exact number of how many units, but it will be uh, less than 298 total units. Questions? Comments? Pleasure to council to send that to advertising. Okay, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, and then I believe the last one, oh, excuse me, the, uh, the next item four is a uh, text amendment to the zoning ordinance. This includes uh, two real, really just cleanup amendments from our previous uh, zoning ordinance amendments regarding signage. Uh, this is to section 9.524, uh, which deals with changeable copy signs. Uh, what most people think about this is either a changeable LED or a changeable kind of manual letter board. And what this does is, on the first part, simply removes the phrase on-premise from uh, a couple of sections. We no longer regulate on versus off-premise, and so this is just kind of a minor cleanup that wasn't caught earlier. And then the second item, nine point, table 9.72, which talks about temporary signs, uh, 
during the, the process, we, we changed uh, the maximum sign area for temporary sign. It was previously 32 square feet. Uh, we'd had some discussions and I thought it had been, was remaining 32 square feet and we miscommunication that I should have called, moved it down to 16 square feet, but we have a lot of 32 square foot signs, temporary signs all over the city. And so uh, we felt it best to, to maintain that 32 square feet uh, size requirement for temporary signs. Questions, comments? Speaking of uh, temporary signs, Matt, on my way over, I saw the first of what I'm sure will be many uh, advertisements for election signs. Yes, sir. What are the rules about uh, yard signs? So a, a temporary sign is a temporary sign. We don't regulate, we don't differentiate between election signs, yard sale signs, any, any temporary sign. Uh, so they would be the same for any any particular sign, and, and this table actually breaks down most of those rules. So uh, residential parcels are allowed a certain number of temporary signs. I think it's eight in here. Uh, their signage is smaller, as you would expect on a residential site. So six square feet is the maximum a residential temporary sign can be, and that doesn't matter whether it's again yard sale sign, uh, religious, any, any type of sign political sign, uh, and then they have to be spaced apart, I believe, uh, uh, 15 feet uh, from other temporary ground signs. And mm -hmm. then for commercial signs, uh, you're allowed uh, lesser signs, but they are allowed to be bigger. So you're allowed four signs. Uh, and again, this uh, currently they would be 16 square feet based on the ordinance, but uh, we're proposing to, to move it back to 32 square feet. We no longer uh, have time limits on signs, so uh, they, they, we don't require that they be removed within a certain period after an election, which was a per, a, an item. We do still require that no temporary signs are allowed within the public right of way, so that, that is one of the, the biggest things that we, we still do uh, have to monitor. Is we do not allow temporary signs within the public right of way. And where is the storage area for the ones that are picked up in case somebody wants to go pick theirs back up? There is a, uh, a, a spot next to our environmental service uh, building that is where we, we locate those. And uh, we will probably, uh, even, with, even with the change to regulations to be a little bit more uh, permissible, we'll still collect quite a few of those signs in the, the next couple months. Question, comments? Pledge that council send this for advertising. All right. The last one is a request for annexation and zoning. This is a property, of course, in the planning jurisdiction, which means it's just outside the city limits. This is by William and Mary William Lowe and Mary Haynes on Lafayette Parkway. This is uh, up uh, near uh, Casita Road. Uh, subject property is 32.6 acres, uh, and their portion of the the overall property has already been annex into the, pro into the city, and so they're hoping to annex just the remainder of that property in so uh, that it'll, the whole property will be under the same regulations and guidelines. Uh, all four sides surrounding this are already in the city limits, and so the Planning Commission has recommended the uh, annexation of this. Uh, and if you choose to do so, it would come in with an R1 zoning designation, which is a rural, low, low residential density, a low density residential zoning. So is this adjacent to the property that we did the subdivision? Uh, this is not, it's, it's uh, across the street and just to the north. Ah. Uh, this is just south of some of the property that was annexed as part of the quarry annexation. Uh, it's just south of that, that entry, the Lee Road 168, which goes back to the quarry property. Okay. And, and then that, uh, this will be advertised as well or? What is, what is the, uh, what are you I, asking I us to do here? We don't actually have to advertise this. I'll, I'll double check with Ms. Gunner, but I believe because it's coming in with the, the standard zoning, we just have to put it on your agenda, uh, most likely at the next meeting. Okay. Questions? We don't have to advertise the thing. It automatically comes in as all one. Okay. So if, if that's okay with you, we'll, we'll add it on to your next, next council agenda meeting. Okay. Yeah, that'll be an ordinance. It will be, yeah, it'll be an ordinance. It'll be an ordinance. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
just for uh, everybody's understanding, when we start on the meeting, um, we have two items that have been asked by the uh, by the representative and the owner to remove from the agenda, and that would be um, a public hearing on the 40 acres, which would be numbers item number seven. Under general business. On the regular agenda. Item number seven under general business. Under general business, and then ordinance number two. Four. Excuse me, four. That's what I meant. Um, and that has to do with the guy that was going to buy it and rezone it and do something there has decided not to buy it. And so you all will help me with that one as we get to it. Anything else that we need to uh, come before the work session before we move into the regular meeting? Okay, we'll wait four minutes and we'll start promptly at seven o'clock. <laughs> Eddie. 
If I may have your attention, please. I'd like to call the Opelika City Council meeting of April the 5th, 2022 to order. Call roll, please. Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen. Here. Ms. Norris. Present. Mr. Aja. Here. Mr. Rauch. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. <clears throat> We're honored to have Jared Collins from Trinity Presbyterian Church with us. I'm going to ask him to make his way to the podium to my left. And uh, Brecken Gould, Gould, the SGA president from Opelika High School, I think is going to that. Ah, Brecken, if you'll make yourself way to this door over here, as soon as we get through with the invocation, we'll let you lead us into the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, if you all would stand. If you would, now go with me to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your grace today, Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the one through whom we can have salvation. Lord, I do pray for our community, uh, for all the first responders, for all of our police officers. Lord, we pray that you would give them courage and protect them. God, we pray for all of our teachers in the schools, and Lord, give them endurance to finish out this school year. God, I pray for all the men and women in this room and for the business that will be conducted tonight. And Lord, I pray that it would be honoring to you or that we would all show love towards one another uh, as you have so greatly loved us. So Lord, we praise you. We give you all glory. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Brecken. You all have uh, previously received a copy of the minutes of the March 15, 2022 uh, council meeting. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Having nine, the minutes will stand as read or presented. Uh, Mr. Mayor. And there has been no less than one million photographs made with that in the background. 
Now, Ginger or Jim or Glenn, how'd you guys get Chris over to the museum? Well, we were supposed to have a mural for Auburn University, and they got COVID. It. Oh. So we had a design, and we had approved already from the city for a mural. So I reached out to Regina and said, "Who did you use?" Yeah. And got in touch with Chris. He came out with our board, met with Matt, met with Lisa, made sure everybody agreed on the design, and we just let him go. Yeah. And then Glenn and Jim, y'all y'all spent some time with Chris yes. before he started. T tell us about the process. Well, uh, Chris came and you know we worked with him. He had the drawings on Auburn University clearly. To me, it looked a little bit on the bigger side. And, and Chris came in and looked at the museum, and we worked with a lot of the paintings and stuff we had done uh, ten years ago in Auburn University. We had a lot of our paint, all our murals were done in uh, sepia tone, and he thought it would be great if we did it in sepia tone, and Chris went back and reorganized the, the uh, what was on the uh, mural. We got uh, when uh, the whole of Nico, the, the Creek Indian Chief was on there. We also had Booker T. Washington. We had uh, Governor Johnson. We got the uh, Secretary of Airmen on there. We also had uh, the Lavelle family uh, with their mules. Uh, the, the Harris family was connected to the, uh, with that. Bob had told me a story about that mule was on the, on the uh, mural that uh, when he was a kid, they had got a new mule and they put it in the, in the factory where this mule was and they brought it in to kill it. And he said, his daddy gave me a gun. He said, you can't kill the other mule that killed it. And then he said, no, I don't want to do that. So he said, you know, now the score is going to prevail on for him. <laughs> <laughs> So Jim, you and the board, when y'all y'all were all in on this? Yeah, yeah. And our uh, our attendance at the uh, museum was spiked a little bit too since the uh, since the mural had been. There were lots of questions of who's who's this and who's that. Who's that guy on the porch? And so we're going to get a, a scale or a, a program so that people will know what each of those uh, units are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all were so we're so happy with Chris. Thank you so much. And we want to present you with a proclamation, not only from me, but the city council, the library, and the museum. Whereas located in the heart of Opelika's downtown historic district at 121 South 9th Street, on the Old Plymouth Hotel site, the Museum of East Alabama first opened its doors in August of 1989. Adjacent to the Lee County Courthouse Square, the museum now houses over 5,000 artifacts including both 19th and 20th century local, state, and general history items. With over 2,000 visitors yearly since its opening, hundreds of visitors receive a look at education about East Alabama, Opelika, and Alabama history. Chris Johnson is the artist painting the mural at the museum and has painted the mural. Whereas Opelika will forever change by the artistry of Chris Johnson, commissioned to paint a mural of East Alabama for the Museum of East Alabama to celebrate the great history of Opelika and East Alabama. Chris also, of course, painted the mural for the new Opelika Public Library, depicting Opelika landmark. Chris received a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Clemson University in 2008, a Master of Fine Arts from the University of South Carolina in 2011. He serves as an Assistant Professor of Visual Arts the director of the visual arts program and the fine arts coordinator at Andrews College in Tulsa, Georgia. He has taught at Andrews College since 2013. Chris is the recipient of the 2016 Capital Art Exhibit Artist of the Year from the Georgia Art Education Association and the 2019 John H. Woodall Excellence in Teaching Award from Andrews College. And whereas Chris is a regionally celebrated and recognized visual artist whose public murals have brought renewed interest to an array of southern communities. And now, therefore, I, Gary Fuller, Mayor of the City of Opelika, by virtue of the authority vested in me, express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to Chris Johnson for preserving Opelika's history through art and creating such a pictorial legacy in print. Listen, I know I stopped by there one day and bothered you, and you had your paint and clothes on, and you kind of look like I do when I'm painting. <laughs> but how long did that take? I mean, you were there a long time. Over the course of a month, it was about 21 days. Long days. 
Well, and, and I would use it. Now, you're, 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 of course, you're an ultra-locker, but I want to ask you how that relates to some of your other gear. That's not, that's a quick, quick <laughs> question. <isn't it? laughs> of course, that's what I've been saying. Yeah. It's my finest work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're so appreciative of you, and we thank you so much, and we will forever be in your debt for your fine work. I want to present this to you. Thank you so much. With our thanks and gratitude, and then a small uh, gift bag for you and your beautiful children and your wife. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, uh, Dondra. Is Dondra here from uh, the um, for the sexual assault <coughs> awareness? Yes. You got anybody with you? Yes. Good. Yes. Dondra's going to be here tonight for the review. Okay. Good. Good. Glad to see y'all. Thank you. Y'all, whereas in the United States, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And the goal is to raise public awareness about Can't sexual violence and to educate communities on how to prevent it. SAM, S-A-A-M, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, calls attention to the fact that sexual harassment, assault, and abuse are widespread and impact every person in this community. Whereas rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment harm our community. And statistics show one in five women and one in 67 men will be raped at some point in their lives. Whereas se child sexual abuse, abuse prevention must be a priority to confront the reality that one in six boys and one in four girls will experience sexual assault before age 18. Whereas on campus, one in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted during their time in college. Whereas this year, SAM is celebrating its 20th anniversary. The theme for this year's campaign, I Ask, helps empower all of us to put consent into practice and shares the message that asking for consent is a normal and necessary part of sex. And whereas we ask all residents of Opelika to join advocates from communities across the country in taking action to prevent sexual violence. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and each day of the year is an opportunity to create change for the future. Now, therefore, I'm Gary Fuller, Mayor of Hubert and Hereby proclaim April 2022 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Opelika, Alabama. Thank you for what y'all are doing. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, would you get the uh, mic a little closer to you, please? This mic here. All right, we got the 20 under 20 student exploratory program. I want uh, Chief uh, Healy and uh, and the captain, Captain Amerson, to come down here, and all these 20 under 20 students. Captain, I want you to stop right here. Y'all come on across here. We want all y'all in here. Y'all ain't got a whole bunch of stuff. Captain Amerson, would you tell us a little bit about these young folks? Yeah, I would love to, Mayor. Um, this right here is a group of uh, ladies and gentlemen that um, they attended our first class of 20 under 20 Explorer program that Dr. Evans helped us come up with. Um, we're very proud of them. 
Uh, this right here is their graduation day. Um, the class consists of six weeks, um, one day a week uh, with the police department, and then another two weeks with the fire department. Let's get Chief Boyd. To, come on up here, Chief. We got the fire department involved in this. <laughs> Need the fire chief up here. Um, Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Chief Healy. Also, we had great support from the uh, school system also. All these are Opa Laika High School students, so we are very proud of them being able to participate in the program. And the program is really designed for um, to build trust in the community, to build relationships, and also hopefully once these young ladies and gentlemen get old enough, once they turn 18 or 21, that they can come back and hopefully work for the Opelika Police Department, the fire department, um, being dispatched, police officers. So that's what the program really was designed for, for them to be able to come in and see what we actually do within the Opelika Police Department and the fire department. And we are very proud of them. Uh, they passed with flying colors, um, and they was a great credit for themselves and their parents, uh, the school system, and the city of Opelika. We're, we're very proud of them. Chief, maybe, I mean, you can't call out your name. When he calls your name out, if you just wave so everybody knows who you are. We have Jada Bell, uh, Kayla Clark, Raina Curtis, Scarlett Erin, uh, Alex Gazelle, uh, Gibson. You know I mess up your first name. <laughs> I don't want to butcher you. Uh, Jawan Graham, Audrey Gibbs, Naja Johnson, uh, Zach McGee, Alicia Pitts, Christopher Skinner, Leslie Smith, Jason Smith, and Jason Tittman. All right. Mayor Fuller. Mayor Fuller, before you get your picture, we've got Dr. Seymour here. Uh, currently the, the superintendent for Opelika High School and pr uh, the uh, principal of Opelika High School as well. So uh, we want to maybe see if you don't mind, Mayor, if he wants to have a work for his students. Y'all <laughs> yeah, come on down. Bunch it up, bunch it up, bunch it up, bunch it up. Bunch it up. Bunch it up. Come on, come on, come on in, come on in. We ain't gonna bite. Come on in. Slide down, slide down. Uh -huh. No, come to the front. Yeah, she. Yeah, stop trying to hide. Get in the front. Yeah, we need to make sure. Hey, he's trying to hide. Thank y'all. Appreciate that. Thank you, Chief. Thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. Y'all did a good job. As Ms. Norris said, we want to uh, make a special recognition, recognition and nod to the new Opelika City School Superintendent, Dr. Farrell Seymour. <laughs> Citizens Communication, Mr. Jones. Okay, everybody. Uh, as some exit 
Now is the time if you would like to speak to the mayor or the council, please come to the podium to my left. If you have not already, I have a sign-in sheet. I need everyone that speaks to sign into this sign-in sheet, please. Name, address, phone, and email. When you speak, Um, name, address, and keep it to five minutes or less, please. We're going to have um, Mr. Rauch here has volunteered to keep the time on his iPad so you can see it, okay? Thanks. I know you're on there, but there's a lot of people here that probably aren't. sick that I couldn't, wasn't able to come to the last uh, meeting when the discussion was made about the 187 uh, apartments, but I decided that it, it, I need to talk. I'm, this is my, my community. We've been here, well, you're going to try that one, huh? Uh, in for almost 39 years, we walk our dogs in this neighborhood, and I'm, I am terribly afraid of the traffic that will occur with this apartment complex. There's only two lanes there in front of the uh, farmer's market, and if you think about it, it would have to really be from I think that's Avenue C. Have to have, you'd have to have it widened all the way down. Now that takes the Baptist parking lot. That takes, uh, what's his name, the uh, photographer's Charlie. place. Yeah. It takes, of course, that next thing is that old building that is not occupied. Then you've got another building, and I thought it w at one time it was a daycare, but maybe it's not. Then they've got empty, an empty lot. But you're getting down towards, towards uh, Chuck's. And we've got the police station on one side. We've got, we get, I travel that fairly often since I go to different schools. We have, uh, we have the up store, up, big at up truck. We have fire trucks. We have ambulances. We have police cars that may need to be getting someplace fast. And with that little bit of space, it's it's not going to be enough. And he's not he's not going. It's not going to be profitable for our our uh, community right there. It's going to be too crowded. Even if they widen it a little bit, it's going to be too crowded. And there'll be no emergency. We already have enough trouble with people not pulling over when an ambulance comes by or the fire truck or a police car. I can imagine what's going to happen with this. <coughs> now, I know you can't, because of the, the, I will say the age of this town, that there was no plan for First Avenue, for Second Avenue to grow bigger. There's no way you can widen any of those roads. But you start widening this road, you'll have to go all the way down to to Marvin uh, to uh, Marvin Parkway. I mean, what's it, back way into to uh, Carver, and uh, it's just not it's not going to be good. I don't want to see it. I'm sorry. You know, why can't they do something with some of these, uh, uh, oh, gee, my brain's gone. I'm sorry, but uh, warehouses and stuff that are empty. I mean, let's use what we got, but don't, <coughs> don't go, don't, I, don't, I just don't want to see this built. I think it'll be a deterrent and unsafe. Oh, I forgot school buses. You got you got 
buses going down to turn on to Fox Run to go up to G, uh, Jeter. You've got buses going to the high school to Morris Avenue. You've got buses that go down there by Winn Dixie to pick up kids to come back into this. I mean, it's just it's it's a mess, and I don't think it needs to be done. And that's <coughs> that's my saying. Good evening, uh, City Council. Uh, I'm here today to let you know something I'm kind of dismayed about that uh, that happened. We had an industry that wanted to come here to Overlack, Alabama, and I feel that the City Council didn't do anything about it because when I presented to the County Commission, I got great support. They want to work with me and help me and get it here. They were going to spend $2.6 billion in the city of Overlap. They love Overlap. They want to come here. It's a hydro plant. And we were going to work to get the gas down to $2 a gallon. You see how the gas price is now. <laughs> but now I think we still got a possible change, but I don't know what's going on. Because when I, I, I took the proposal to the economic government, they didn't hear anything about it. I called up there and, and I inquired about that. And, they, and the answer I got, we might not want something like that. So I said the city council must don't know this out there. Because uh, the question that comes to my mind because when I went to the commission meeting, everybody supported that except one person. So I feel like that somebody must have seen that I might not have anything like that is real. It's real. One of the commission talked to the person. Individual liked the overlap and he loved it. He said that's a good place. I see what you're talking about. You got the Good university, you got a good school system, and you got a sub union. And they were going to have five campus. I mean, high paying jobs, $30,000 to $60,000 a year job. And some of the things we've been talking about that we need to take care of in our city. We could have took care of some of these things. And there was a nice guy, and right now they plan to come to 10 different locations. We now come to here now and talk to y'all. So I feel like I can let the city council know about that. So I can be influenced and bring them back here. I don't want to bring anyone here to overlap in a hostile atmosphere. I want to bring them here that we hold on a weapon. Because the city council I know and the people I know, they weapon you with open arms, with love. That can help us. Somebody's going to spend $2.6 billion here. That could have changed the city overlap. That could have built some of the stuff we're talking about. That could have helped with economic development. But I wish I can get with you as one of dialogue because he loved over there. He told me I didn't want to feel that atmosphere that I felt that I was going to bring him here anyway. That would have been bad. But he has got to, I mean, have to be transparent with you. The first plant that we located in Georgia, we got that worked out. We got one in Cincinnati. And 80% of the funding, the, the federal government loved it. They were going to provide 80% of the funding we had to come up with for some say, the last 50 years. We found because we had some money. And we were there asking them to come here to help the people because the people I talked to in Overlap were looking for good. And what I was told by the city of Overlap, we all were looking for good, paying jobs, high tech, green energy, clean jobs. We're going to help the community. But I just want to come here and plead to the this city council, even I talked to the president, you remember I called you, uh, uh, President Smith, and told you about it. And the man liked it, and I, they want to come here. And I don't want to bring them in with a hostile attitude like this. But if y'all can just sit down, get together, y'all get back with me, I can put over overlap back on the map. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> 
If I state my name and address, does that count as my five minutes? <laughs> okay. Anyhow, thank you. My name is Joyce Newland, and I live at Oak Valley Road, 1708, in case anybody's interested from that. Okay. Uh, what I would like to do, I was here last meeting, and I discussed the transparency. I would like to ask the council, is this another exercise in futility, in meaning that if people are speaking against a project or for a project, has it already been decided, such as it was with the Point Broadband or with the, uh, the uh, uh, ordinance, renting ordinance, rental ordinance, has, it, has this decision already been made? I'm asking you, is, has this decision already been made? And, we, and whatever we say is little or no value. Okay. Uh, the reason why we're not responding is we're not allowed to respond. I just okay. could not not say anything to okay. let you know Thank that. Thank you very yes, much. I just wanted to make that point because I just want to three points. I spent close to three years of my life and time to help secure the $100,000 that restored the depot and repaired it. I have actively worked to make Opelika grow and become better. I served as a member of the president of Opelika Main Street, working on ways to establish a viable downtown. Ken Ward referenced a study made in the past two years, but until the information came out in the paper, he did not furnish actual papers to cite these, and I would like this information shared with the Opelika citizens. My second point relates to my five years working in a gift shop on 8th Street, talking and meeting with numerous folks who spoke favorably of the ambience and charm of downtown Opelika, who came from either all stopped off the interstate. The growing number of restaurants and breweries, draft breweries and musical entertainment that appeal to a significant demographic re region is a result of this depot restoration. And I have also been privy to discussion with numerous business owners that found their businesses was on the way to reaching a profit status when they had to close because of exorbitant increases in the rent. What can be done to help these businesses repay productive and competitive outside of just bringing in more foot traffic? What can be done to control rent price increases? It does no good to locate business only to have them pushed out. Thirdly, I do think there can be an agreement that housing for the adjacent area is needed but more open discussion should be held as to the type and diversity of housing, along with the desirability and accommodations of amenities. There was an offhand dismissal of close to 1,000 signatures in protest, claiming that this to be an insignificant number of Opelika population. To my way of thinking, the collection of that many signatures in only three days, with also having to illustrate and educate as to the purpose, is nothing to dismiss trivially. So trivially, by dismissing this citizen input, it gives the impression that citizen input and participation is not wanted. Although do I not consider the design, as others may have said, as but ugly, it does border on not attractive and certainly does not meld with the other architects in our city, such as the recent police office or library existing churches, downtown or additions of the Southwest Southside project. Maintaining integrity of the area, whether walking to it or driving to it, is important. Finally, why are regulations established as the zones if they can be appended on the whim of a property owner who does invest money then wants changes without transparency of other property owners and citizens of Opelika knowing them? Transparency in a city government is a good thing. Why not practice it? Every month we have something on the thing that says this is the word for the city. And this word I'm like to suggest for this week and for this time and for our whole city government right now is transparency because sometimes I feel that we are not achieving it. And I thank you for your time. Ms. Newland, I, I have your letter and I'll add it to the minutes as you requested. second time here. My name is Kathy with a K, Bonafidi, 
and I live at 456 South 10th Street. I have the adorable house that has the white picket fence across from the police department and across from the farmer's market. And I have several things to share quickly. When we moved here five years ago, we handpicked the house, we handpicked the town, and it took me a year to find my house. I said that last week too. I flew in multiple weekends because I fly for free. My son is a pilot. And I worked with a realtor till I found that house. And we made an offer and they accepted it and we took it and immediately somebody else was making an offer too, even though it had said empty for a year. <laughs> Crazy how somebody wanted that house. But I got it and I love it. And I've been there five years. So I wanna tell you where I came from. I come from Loveland, Colorado, north of Denver. It's an artsy town, and Opelika is where Loveland was 25 years ago. There is a foundry, and then there was a second foundry, and the man who owned the second foundry was my silent financial partner on any business that I wanted to start. So for 12 years, we started seven businesses, and I was the troubleshooter in others of his businesses, so I've seen business and how it works. Loveland, with the two foundries, brought in 56 internationally recognized sculptors to move there. They do sculpture in the park where 10,000 people come in on the second weekend of August and do sculpture in the park with big, huge circus tents put up. It's stunning, it's awesome. Now the painters are there. I was instrumental in starting the art school there for fine arts. And I put together the catalog and the workshops and the nude modeling and it, it just exploded, the town exploded and artistic people came and it was a destination town. And it didn't lack apartment buildings and it didn't lack vitalization. And I'm gonna say that the 182 apartments, I'm not opposed to them. I'm opposed to four stories taking away my southern sunshine on my porch and in my yard. I'm not excited about that. The other thing is I sit in my house and my house rumbles, my floors vibrate. It's a 120 year old house, it's gonna vibrate, but when trucks go by and commercial vehicles go by, my house vibrates. I pray every time an ambulance goes by, Father God, wherever that crisis is and that ambulance is going, I ask you to put angels there and minister life to whoever's in a crisis. I pray for the police department as they come and go when I have my 5.30 coffee, as they're going in and out their gate, and I pray individually for that officer in that car, bless his family, help his wife, give him courage, give him the training he needs, promote him to the position he needs to go to. I love living in my house. Now I'm gonna bring you to the point that I wanna make. And the point is, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says that there is a way that seems like life to a man, but the end thereof is death. And I'm gonna say that if you pass this amendment on here, to change the residential on the first floor, that you can allow it in the 182 unit buildings. That is a way that seems like life for the moment, but the end thereof is death, because now you're talking about across from Pepperell Village and doing investments there and building apartment buildings and residential. And on this one right here, across from my house, you're gonna say they can have residential on the main floor and not commercial? That is absolutely crazy. We need a French bakery. We need a jewelry shop. We need a potter with their own business. We need artisans to come into this town and make this a destination art town where people wanna come and they wanna spend an hour. Then they wanna spend five hours. Then they wanna spend a day. Then they wanna spend a weekend. I think that this town could be a fabulous art destination but it's not gonna do it if you put that building up and set precedence for the rest of the town. So I'm asking you, defeat that one amendment. Hey, Robert Jones, 700 6th Avenue. And um, this apartment complex, um, the rezoning, I'm just afraid uh, once it starts, it, it will never uh, end. And also have concern, that, uh, can the city's water and sewage uh, handle this infrastructure? 
Um, I've also been surprised to hear that most downtown businesses don't even want this. Uh, what happens if these don't get finished uh, because occu occupancy can't be met? And um, please do not kill the farmer's market. And then uh, lastly, Mayor Fuller, who's going to win the Masters? <laughs> not, not, Thank you. Not, not the mayor. Good evening, my name is Allie Rauch and I uh, reside at 2240 Lakeview Drive here in Opelika. Tonight I'm here, though I am here on behalf of the Opelika Chamber of Commerce. Since our inception in 1941, the Opelika Chamber has represented the business community. Lawyers, developers, restaurateurs, retailers, small mom and pop shops, major industry partners, and so much more. Our mission is to strengthen our community as the champion for business. We are continually focused on celebrating and serving our business community by raising awareness and driving traffic to our business partners and by helping them thrive by building, by fulfilling their needs from training to hiring to marketing and more. Opelika is a unique community that is known for its welcoming atmosphere that both the citizens and general community provide. We applaud the current city administration for their pro-business stance that has attracted entrepreneurs of all shapes and sizes. We have a unique, beautiful, and sometimes bustling downtown community that is an official Main Street community, one of only 29 in the state of Alabama. We have a lot to be proud of. In the last 12 months alone, the Oblique Chamber has welcomed more than 185 members to our network and hosted nearly 60 ribbon cuttings. With the recent creation of Food Truck Fridays, we're driving record-breaking sales to our downtown partners and visiting food trucks, providing a lively and jam-packed downtown atmosphere. Our membership is made up of more than 850 businesses, community members, nonprofit organizations, and others representing upwards of 20,000 employees in the region. With our diverse membership base also comes diverse opinions regarding community development. The Opelika Chamber Board of Directors supports our business community and many efforts that will continue to drive the revitalization of downtown, Midtown, Pepperell Parkway, the Mill Village, Tigertown, and the entirety of our business community. Fundamentally, additional residents with excess spending power will have the potential to drive significant economic impact to our business owners in the area. For that reason, the Opelika Chamber Board of Directors supports the concept of residential opportunities situated within walking distance to our historic downtown district, but also additional districts throughout the city. As new developments expand and open in our community, we look forward to welcoming, welcoming their investment in our community, their membership to our organization, and their residents to our vibrant home. Thank you. Others? Now we'll move on. Um, my name is Marilyn Vogel. I'm at 711 Fourth Avenue, and um, I do not want a jam-packed community. <laughs> I'll just say, and I also think, uh, you know, we need to be careful about the the definitions of uh, business diversity. Um, you know, this a lot of me, I'm sad to see. Uh, uh, James Brothers Bikes go. I wouldn't really call the downtown area like that much of a, I, I think it lacks business diversity, okay? And last but not least, it's an ancillary issue, but I think it relates to the idea of the marketplace and the polis, our city, and like the, the, the public space we occupy. And the chamber is bringing realtors into our schools. Okay, realtors don't belong in the schools. Our schools are not part of the marketplace. They're not there so people can make money and sell homes, okay? So these always like, well, you know, we need everybody to be getting richer or a few people to getting richer is not really what democracy is about, okay? So I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. And I realize I'm bringing you other issues, but um, you know, we don't want, we don't want really inflated home prices so that people can't afford to live here, you know? Yeah. 
Good afternoon. My name is Shay Knight, and my wife, our cat Bella, and our Great Dane Little reside at 829 South Railroad Avenue in downtown Oplaca. Some people say, oh, you live at the Irish Bread Pub. Not quite, but very, very close. As a resident of downtown, I can attest to the fact that Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays are practically dead in downtown, and we absolutely love it that way. We made up like our home 30 years ago because, because we could not afford to live in Auburn at that time. We lived in Northside District, and we would always drive to Auburn, Columbus, or Montgomery to shop, to eat, basically for any entertainment, because as many of you recall, there was nothing to do in Oplaca, much less downtown Oplaca. Basically, Oplaca was a stagnant community. So what's changed? We've obviously had some great visionaries to recognize that Oplaca has a sweet spot on the map. We have added world-class golf facilities, shopping, restaurants, many job opportunities, and as a result, our downtown area has come back to life. Our housing is booming in many regards. We can thank our city leadership and current and former council persons, which is quite amazing considering they usually fall in the older, older category like myself. Excuse me, guys. Older excludes former councilwoman T Tiffany Gibson Pitts, current council persons Todd, Tim, and Erica. Y'all fall in the younger category. So what's the draw to our downtown? Pla <laughs> Places like the Irish Bread Pub, Red Clay, Resting Pulse Brewery, John Emerald Distillery, Event Center, The Art House, Stern Park. These things attract people. They attract people to our restaurants, coffee shops, retail shops, and visitors to the museum. It's quite interesting to observe from our balcony that our residents are drawn into downtown when they see young, funky people with bikes mounted on their Volkswagens and Subarus. It's part of the use draw there downtown. At least for me, it makes me feel younger. It draws people into our shops and our restaurants. Being honest, when I first heard about the proposed apartments, I was not for it. But then I asked myself, would it benefit Opelika? Would it benefit its citizens? Would it benefit its businesses? You see, I, I insure a number of small businesses in Opelika. And recently, I have made a point to ask them, how are you doing? The overwhelming response was, we are getting by. As a small business owner myself, I can tell you that business owners will get by until they're tired of getting by. Last Friday night, our downtown was packed. Our businesses were thriving. And I'm for businesses thriving rather than getting by. Recently, Mafia's has reopened. The coffee shop opened for business. But at the same time, we have lost Nathan Rell. Ampersand's Wine Bar, James Brother Bikes, La Catina, all in the last year. We simply can't exist on first and third food truck Friday nights. We must have daily foot traffic with the residents living in or near downtown. Over the past year, we have hosted my cousin on three visits to Oplaca. She had recently retired from a state job in Florida and fell in love with our city. Her only request for a place is that it be within be within walking distance to downtown. She was willing to rent or buy. She is a perfect example of someone with disposable income that would be an asset to have as a downtown resident. After many months of trying, she has finally chosen Hickory, North Carolina, solely because there are very few limited choices in or near downtown Opelika. We lost that opportunity. It's also Awesome to see the core of our downtown expanding thanks to visionaries like Jen and Rob Slocum who created the sound wall. John Marsh for creating the new retail, retail opportunities at the old De Davis Tower locations. Richard Patton for the new construction south of First Baptist Church and the expansion of business opportunities on First Avenue. Last Friday, a group of Auburn University landscape architect students spent nine hours on South Railroad Avenue showcasing their ideas for changes to downtown Oplaca from the depot to the dog park near the art house. Some of those ideas included removing parking on South Railroad Avenue in front of our residents and putting in green spaces, water features, amphitheaters, painted murals on bridge supports, painted sidewalks. The list goes on and on. As downtown residents who like to park underneath our balcony, it would be easy for us to resist the changes that are likely to come our way over the next decade. But as invested owners of our downtown residents, we are committed and willing to accept anything that moves up like a forward. Quite honestly, I am excited about the future of our great city. We lived just five blocks from downtown prior to moving to downtown in 2019. We could have easily have formed an opinion about whether or not we supported this or not, but we made it a point to support our business. We have seen them struggle. We have seen the layoffs. We have witnessed the financial struggles and the business closings firsthand. Quite simply, they need more opportunity. 
In our opinion, that ought to be done, Todd. In our opinion, the proposed department community would benefit Opelika, its citizens and its business while moving Opelika forward and preserving what makes Opelika unique. For us, it's not a decision about the style or the color of the structure. The question for us is, does it benefit Opelika? Does it benefit its citizens? Does it benefit its businesses? Thank you for listening. Two others. We're going to move on this time. Mr. Jones. Find my place, Mr. President. I'm sorry. First item under general business is a request for alcohol license. El Taco Veloz and Mexican Grill LLC. This is a restaurant, retail, liquor, and on-premise beer license. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Second item is a request from the uh, Cancer Society for Relay for Life event at Courthouse Square on April 29th, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Third item is a request for a food truck at Whistle Stop Brew, Bottle and Brew on May 5th, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Fourth item is a request from Keep Up Like a Beautiful for a Garden in the Park on May 7th, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Fifth item is a request from Opelika Main Street on behalf of First United Methodist Church Opelika for a block party slash fish fry on June 16th, 2022. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Is that Mr. Aja? Yes. Having nine, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Sixth item is a public hearing for a demolition at 2013 Waverly Parkway. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare public hearing closed. Seventh and final item is a public hearing to amend a zoning and ordinance map 2800 block Society Hill Road. This is 40 acres from C2 and R1 to C2. This item has been requested to be removed from the agenda by the, uh, by the owners and their representative. Is there a motion to remove the item from the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye to remove. Resolutions, Mr. Gunner. <coughs> Mr. President, the uh, first resolution approves a travel expense report submitted by Courtney Jones of the Information Technology Department and Lori Hughley of Economic Development. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having nine, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The uh, second resolution authorizes the mayor to dispose of certain surplus personal property of the city, including four defibrillators and a uh, 210 Ford F100 pickup truck. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Having none, call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The third uh, resolution approves the rental of a fire truck by the Opelika Fire Department 
uh, from Williams Fire Apparatus at a cost of $20,400. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. I have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The fourth resolution uh, authorizes Opelika Environmental Services Department to purchase a 34 cubic yard compactor from Southeastern Scales LLC at a cost of $43,820.94. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The uh, fifth resolution authorizes the police department to purchase a three year maintenance contract for security cameras from uh, CDW Government Incorporated at a total cost of $52,008.45. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The sixth resolution authorizes the Information Technology Department to purchase rubric software from CDW Government Incorporated at a total cost of $76,459.52. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The seventh resolution authorizes the Opelika Police Department to purchase seven 70 bowler route devices from uh, Gulf, State, Gulf State's distributors at a total cost of $79,775.50. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Just a comment. Uh, looking these devices up, uh, Awesome. Very happy to approve it and uh, look forward to uh, public safety having this additional uh, part of their toolkit. Other? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Aja? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. The uh, eighth resolution <laughs> approves a refund in the amount of cents to Sawyer Stevens for occupational license fees paid in error from 2021. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? <coughs> Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. The ninth resolution approves a uh, proposal submitted by Sane Associates Incorporated to retime uh, 22 intersections in Opelika, this is phase two, at a total cost of $75,000. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Enthusiastically second. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Is there a uh, discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Uh, the uh, Auburn Opelika MPO recently approved a new functional classification map for Lee County, and uh, you have before you resolution number 10 that endorses that uh, functional reclassification map and the reclassification of certain streets within the city of Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Aja. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 11 approves a professional agreement between the city of Opelika and John Randall Wilson, an architect, to design the new fire station, uh, which will be located uh, on Gateway Drive. And uh, that's what it does. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? 
Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 12 approves change order number two to the contract between the City of Opelika and Robinson Paving Company for the North Park Drive improvements. Uh, this change order will increase the contract amount by $129,922.72, resulting in a new contract amount of $1,843,502.50. Uh, this change order uh, was required because of uh, certain pre-construction uh, layout errors that resulted in the uh, laying of additional asphalt and the purchase of additional materials for the project. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Okay, uh, discussion. So are th were these engineering from the beginning, were these on, was that on the city side or was that on the bidder side, the, not under knowing what was there? This is on the construction management side. Okay. Others? Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Rout? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 13 approves a approved change order number three to the sign, to the client services agreement with TTL Incorporated for Industrial Boulevard and North Park Drive improvements. Uh, this company provided inspection services and due to weather delays, the project had, uh, had to be extended. And the change order amount is $39,031, resulting in a new contract amount of $639,731. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 14 approves the annual license, license agreement between the City of Opelika and the Opelika City Board of Education uh, for the 2022 Freedom Celebration, Celebration Fireworks Exhibition which will be held on July 2, 2022. The city uh, of Opelika holds this uh, fireworks display at the Opelika High School campus and therefore needs a license agreement from the Board of Education. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an on-call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted up. Resolution number 15 approves a right-of-way encroach, encroachment license agreement with Edgar Houston Builder Incorporated. This would allow the, the developer to install a subdivision entrance sign for Drake's Landing Subdivision, which is located on South Unilor Road. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 16 orders the demolition of the unsafe uh, structure located at 2013 Waverly Park Parkway. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. The 17th resolution accepts a grant in the amount of $210,000. This is for a trail grant from the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Affairs. Uh, the original application was for $400,000. The city was awarded $210,000. The city's match is $61,832. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. The 18th resolution authorizes the submittal of a grant application 
to the Alabama Department of Transportation for a new uh, deceleration lane to serve the, uh, the uh, new uh, Niagara Bottling Company plant. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a there call the roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 19 approves a special use permit to AT&T to modify the 190-foot uh, uh, tower located at 1315 Madison Avenue. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have an on-call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 20 uh, approves a special use permit to AT&T to modify the 250-foot self-support tower located at 2000 Steel Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have it on call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 21 approves a special use permit to AT&T to modify a 158-foot monopo monopole tower located at 2605 Tower Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine-call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 22 approves a special use permit to, to dish wireless to modify a 390-foot self-support tower located at 1015 West Point Parkway. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 23 approves a special use permit to dish wireless to modify a uh, 249 self-support tower located at 3460 U.S. Highway 280 East. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 24 approves a special use permit to dish wireless to uh, modify a, um, a cell tower located at 4499 North Park Drive. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 25 approves a uh, special use permit to T-Mobile to modify a 158-foot monopole tower located at 2605 <coughs> Tower Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. Norris? Aye. Mr. Agent? Aye. Mr. Routes? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 26 approves a special use permit to T-Mobile to modify a 249 self-support tower located at 3460 U.S. Highway 280. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Routes. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 27 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $5,000 to the American Cancer S uh, Society to help uh, fund the annual Relay for Life event in Opelika. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? 
Have a name. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 28 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $2,500 to keep Opelika beautiful to assist in funding the 2022 Garden in the Park event. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a non call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number 29 approves a special appropriation in the amount of $50,000 to the Lee County Emergency Manage Management Agency to assist uh, with the renovations uh, to its operations center and administrative offices located at 908 Avenue B. Uh, it should be noted that uh, Lee County, the City of Auburn, and the City of, City of Smith Station and Auburn University have also agreed to contribute funds uh, for this uh, project. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have an on call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Uh, resolution number 30 approves a special appropriation to Opelika Main Street in the amount of $100,000 to assist with renovation to its new building uh, located at 108 South 8th Street. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Ordinances, Mr. Gunner. Mr. President, the uh, first ordinance is uh, up for second reading at this meeting, and it approves a long-term lease between the City of Opelika and the Opelika Chamber of Commerce for the building located at uh, 200 South 6th Street, which was the old library building. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I have a nine call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Abstain. Mr. Smith. Aye. Four ayes, one abstain. Mr. President, the uh, second ordinance is before the council for second uh, reading, comes to the council with a positive recommendation from the Opelika Planning Commission. Uh, this, this ordinance approves the rezoning of a 7.8 acre parcel of land located at the intersection of 10th Street and Avenue C from an M1 GCS district to a C1 GCS district. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Discussion. Just quick comment. I want to thank everybody who reached out on both sides of this, this issue to uh, be heard. Much appreciated. And I want to piggyback on that as well. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, hosting an event um, for a specific discussion on this issue. And um, I want to just personally thank uh, all those that did attend that event, um, as well as all the citizens and business owners that have reached out to us so far. So thank you all so much for being a part of the process. Thank you. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Nay. Mr. Agent. Nay. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Three ayes, two nays. Uh, the third ordinance is before the council for second reading and comes to the council <coughs> with a positive recommendation from the Opelika Planning Commission. Uh, this ordinance is, is to amend uh, the text of the zoning ordinance of the city of Opelika, in, which includes uh, density requirements in the downtown C1 district and uh, building and design regulations relating to the C1 district. Is there a motion to approve this ordinance? So moved. Is, is there a second? Second. Wait. Question. Is that what you wanted to do? No. Are you supposed to ask, right? Is that a question? The, the, the question was, is there a motion to approve that ordinance? Yes. But 
once you ask a question, then I have a comment. No, sir. Um, based on my conversation with you before this meeting, it was going to be your recommendation that well, we I, and I will do that at the proper time. Oh, I see what you're saying. He's going to do it in discussion. Okay. All right. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Yes. I do. Oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I just want to first. Know. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> yeah, uh, George. I would like okay. to put the okay. planning commission for all their hard work and all they do for the growth and prosperity of our great city. You have a hard job, and we do appreciate the decisions that you sent our way. But also, after having many meetings, many conversations with a lot of people in Opelika, I feel that it's imperative that we remove this item from the table and the agenda to give us more time to study the traffic, the style of the building, or the facade, or even the number of units. Okay. Mm. So I just want to make sure that we can take it away off the table. We make that in the form of a motion. A motion that we take it off the table. I second that motion. But it's not on the table. Oh, it's not. We got it. It's on the agenda. It's got to be. It's on the agenda. So you want to remove it from the agenda. agenda. Okay. So we need to withdraw from the motion to approve the item as it stands. We made a motion to approve. Well, it. that's not what I was told I was handling. Well, the, the motion to withdraw from the agenda would take precedence over the motion for adoption. It's okay. like a motion to table. So right then you're making a motion to remove it After, from the agenda. Right, agenda. right. Is there a second? I seconded that motion. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Yes. Uh, I heard um, you all trying to decide um, what George was supposed to excuse me, Councilman Allen was supposed to say. Now, my understanding is that there are not supposed to, any, are not supposed to be any discussions about these topics when there are enough council members present that can be considered a quorum. So one, two, three. Well, actually the no. conversation was about the order of how he should do that. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the conversation was one, two. It, it was mine me that wanted to remove it from the agenda. And that's parliamentary procedure. And I do have that right. Yeah, we're not talking about rights. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure I understand that this was not a discussion or deliberation in regards to this topic. That's it. Well, it was, George and I had a discussion about it. We sure did. Okay. But it was a discussion about how to handle it in the meeting under what order. And he was correct and I was wrong, actually. Uh, and so when we discussed it before, we were on the same page. I screwed that up a few minutes ago. George was correct, and George is doing exactly what he asked to do, to be able to do. Okay. Thank you all so much. Uh, Mr. President, if I may, I also want to echo what um, Councilman Allen is, is talking about with, with this development. We received numerous phone calls and emails from many people in the public trying to get a, an idea of what this development is, what it will be, and looking going towards the future. The ground that I stood on against this was the traffic on 10th Street. With that is, you know, the only road that goes from the interstate to downtown without turning. That is a one-track road. We've got buses going down there all the time. And what we're doing now with taking this text amendment off the table, which allows for first floor residential and adds for an increase in den overall density for the, for the C1 properties. With that, going back to the Planning Commission, um, I talked to Lewis Cherry this morning, uh, the chairman of the, of the Planning Commission, and, and about this, this item. And for the first time, he, he told me, he was emphasized the importance of the City Council and the Planning Commission working together on approving these developments. And there's going to be some growing pains with a planning commission trying to learn what is important to us as city council members, but also trying to understand the perspective from a, a planning commission member on what their roles and rules are for, for what they're trying to do for the growth of Opelika. And what um, Mr. Cherry conveyed to me was 
I, I think together we can really accomplish something here, and that's that's really important because I I saw I heard the importance of what he was trying to say and and working together on this issue, especially with downtown residential living, because it is a it is a very big topic. With this going back to the planning commission, I would stress to um, the the marshes and also their their investment team to look at this development and try to make a way that it would be more, it would look more like downtown Opelika. I understand that there are priorities that have to be made and you know there's money and investment in this project, but that is important to the people and therefore it is important to us. And the other thing is you know, looking at getting the 10th street widened to where it would be able to actually handle all that traffic and I drove down Clanton Street the other day which is a relief for this development as in traffic and Clanton is a small street I mean I would like to see a lot of development well, a study done there some type of traffic study to where we can see exactly where our pinpoints are before they become a problem as in for traffic and the other thing I would also like to add is that the when reaching out to the city council for, for issues, there are some things that we can and can do. There are some issues that can stand and don't matter in the perception of private property rights. But I appreciate everyone trying to understand, at least from, from my perspective to the citizens that I talk to, understanding the perspective of traffic and trying to get that more established. I would also like to add that um, I'm sure most of us up here have gotten uh, former council member Jim McCory's uh, email on the, the water and how that goes into the, the property, and I haven't had a chance to talk to, um, to Joey this week, but um, and looking at that to make sure that we have all the infrastructure in place that can handle a large apartment complex unit in that area. So those three things with the marshes looking at the property and making sure, trying to go back and make sure it fits in downtown Opelika, the widening of 10th Street, and also make sure that we have the proper municipal infrastructure as in a water, sewer, everything like that um, before we do this. President right. Smith, one final comment. Um, I did, I neglected to mention to the marshes, um, the meeting that I did host in Ward 2, um, my colleague attended, um, followed my leadership on, on that particular project, uh, Councilman uh, Rout. Um, but I do want to definitely say um, on record that the marshes uh, participated in that discussion. They did not have to, um, and they were gracious enough to come and sit and answer some very difficult questions in front of uh, a sometimes a hostile crowd. So I do want to go on record and thank them for participating in that. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Gunner, our vote now is to remove the item from the agenda. Is that correct? That's correct. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye to remove. Yes. Uh, the fourth ordinance is to rezone 40 acres located at the west side of Society Hill Road. Uh, the developer indicated a preference to remove this item from the agenda, so we'll need a motion to remove from the agenda and a second. I make a motion to remove, from, to remove it from the agenda. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Mr. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Ms. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. To remove. Uh, we have no appointments tonight. Uh, and before we adjourn, the character trait of the month is truthfulness, the fact of being true. I think we have a video to go with this character trait. Yeah, I'm going to try. The volume wasn't working earlier. Um, if it doesn't work this week, we're going to do it uh, in two weeks at the next one. We'll make sure it works then. The description of it. Uh, this is what I was trying to tell you, Dr. Allen. Taylor will flip it over for me. Yeah, the volume's not working. I'm going to have to work on it for the next one. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Norris. Aye. Mr. Agent. Aye. Mr. Rout. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, you're here. 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 you are here 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 you are